Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is the brand spanking new 12900K. But how good is it in DaVinci Resolve? Playing back video, you know, we as video editors want to know that. So that's exactly what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at all sorts of codecs from 4K to 12K with color grading. And uh, let's see how well does it perform. This video is sponsored by Artlist, which is also my go to music and sound effects licensing site. Music license from Artlist is covered by a worldwide royalty free license which includes all projects from personal YouTube videos to high end TV commercials. Once you've downloaded a song with active subscription, it's yours to keep forever. New music and sound effects are added to the site daily so you'll never run out of choice. There's one affordable annual subscription cost with no hidden fees and the best part is if you sign up through the links in the description below, you'll get two months for free. So check out Artlist list in the video description below. So it's also important to note the actual specs of the system that we're using over here. In the middle of it is the Asus ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi board. It's beautiful. Not just beautiful, super powerful, packed full of features for creators, one of the best boards to get if you want to pair it up with this CPU. Next up, we have some DDR5 RAM from Kingston. It's Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 5200 megahertz CL40. Our GPU is the Asus TUF RTX 3090 and to cool the CPU, we are using the ROG Ryujin 360 millimeter AIO. Now to eliminate all the bottlenecks in the system, we're also using the most balls to the wall SSDs in the system, which are the Seagate Firecuda 532 terabyte SSDs. If you want to check out any of those things, I'm going to leave them linked below. Here we have the DaVinci Resolve 17.3.2, I think, yes. Build 8, 17.3.2, so just so you know which version we are using. So this is now 4K, 30 frames per second, 422. Okay, this is H.264, and uh, this is 422, 25 frames per second. It's always interesting that um, the 25 frames per second plays back a little bit harder than the 30 frames per second. And this is SI, 25 frames per second, 422, 10-bit. This is all 422. By the way, this is tested with the color grade as well. So I'll show you like what is the color grade setup over here. So we have some curves, uh, two LUTs and a noise reduction on there. So something that, you know, would kind of show each of person's, you know, workflow. So you know that, you know, if you put some stuff on top, you'll actually see the playback. So we're going to press play. We are using the 1080p. Actually, timeline resolution is 4K. So, hey, let's press play. Playback over here. No problem. Plays back 422 pretty well. Seems like it's got no problem doing that. 30 frames per second, 25 frames per second, pressing play as well. No problem. Just don't look at my color grade. I just wanted to do like a quick stuff to show you that there's actually color grade on. So if I flick it on and off, you see the difference. Now let's move on to 60 frames per second, okay? So this is 60 frames per second, 420. We're going to press play, it plays it back, no problem, this is 4K timeline, remember that. And timeline performance, very, very good. Now it's a little bit choppy, the 4.2.0. And this one, let's have a look. Yeah, they're both H.264 codex. It works okay, it's not like smooth, but it's completely editable. That's, that's what I would say, completely edible. For the system. I'm just gonna press play, let's see what happens over here. As you can see, it's interesting, like the memory usage is quite low. Our GPU is absolutely raking it in here. So now this over here is H.265, so high efficiency codec. Let's see how does this work over here. This is 422, which means that this should be accelerated on the iGPU. Now let's have a look if it is. No, it actually isn't. It's the uh, NVIDIA GPU that plays this back. Ah, uh, this is 420, that's why. If it was 422, then it would be. So 420, this goes on the NVIDIA GPU. Playback is okay. This is 420 as well, 24 frames per second. A bit less. Playback is okay, we're gonna press play. Plays it back, no problem. Now this over here should be accelerated now through the iGPU. 
and it's a little bit faster yeah let's have a look boom yeah so the iGPU now is playing it back because DaVinci Resolve can actually utilize the uh, hardware codecs on this which is very very interesting so H.265 if it's 422 then it can be accelerated on the iGPU which is going to give you a much better timeline performance so this is fantastic as you can see it's even better timeline performance than on this 420 which is uh, played back on the RTX 3090 so if you go to the 422 well actually it's very very similar so let's press play over here as well 422 10-bit H.264 sorry 5 it's fine as you can see it is utilizing the iGPU and the RTX 3090 at the same time. The 3090 is probably playing back some of the color grading, whilst the actual video codec is played back on the iGPU. Very clever way of using hardware, fantastic. Now this over here is Canon R5, 60 frames per second, 422, 10-bit, and it's DCI 4K, so it's a right nutcracker to play back so let's see if there is i think there's color grading on that one as well yeah exactly all the clips clips have exactly the same color grade so there shouldn't be any differences over there but let's press play let's see what happens so we're gonna press play plays back 24 frames per second isn't dropping any frames we have some weird green artifacts going on over here so let's have a look okay the igpu is absolutely <laughs> to the walls now look 100% utilized trying to video decode this oh it's interesting there should be two video decodes inside as well but it's trying to decode that and that is absolutely insane now it is pretty good compared to what it is because we just tested this on Premiere Pro and over there then we had the CPU absolutely 100% now we have the iGPU 100% but still the GPU CPU sorry has some room to play around and do some other things to be honest this is so far the most impressive performance of the 12900K I have seen and um, because this is a very hard codec to play back so let's take the color grade off let's see what happens then let's just press play over here let's say that you add the color grade later for example as you can see, the NVIDIA GPU now, look, is doing nothing. 3090 is doing nothing, but the iGPU is still playing back the codec. So if you have the color grade on, you better have a good GPU to just play that back. The Canon C200, this is 4K RAW, 60 frames per second, and the timeline performance is very, very good. It's interesting, on Premiere Pro we had quite a bit of tearing of this. If you want to see the Premiere Pro one, go check that one out, it was a previous video. But this one doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. It shows 24 frames per second playback, but it's actually choppy. That's interesting. So what's the bottleneck over here? It's just utilization, can't do it, I guess. Timeline performance, okay. But when we press play, it starts to be a bit choppy. Let's see if we change the timeline performance to full HD. See if that is, makes any difference. Yeah, massive difference. If it's full HD timeline, as you can see, it's like, woohoo, there we go. We're going through it like a hot knife through butter. But if the timeline is moved back to 4K, then it is really, really choppy. Can't play that back. This is a 4K Red Raw. Uh, so let's have a look over here. The timeline is, is a little bit choppy when we're doing this. Uh, it's still pretty good though, but I've seen smoother ones. Premiere Pro was much smoother when it came to this. It's still playing it back. No problem, but it's not producing as many frames as Premiere Pro was. Premiere Pro was so much more smoother than this. Um, exact same setup. Let's move on to 5K now. 5K Red Raw, exactly the same settings with color grade and everything on. Now it's dropping frames. 
seriously drop in frames, our CPU is 100%. So 5K is quite choppy over here. I think our timeline is still, yeah, so this is 4K timeline and this is 5K. Let's see if we move the timeline now here to 1080p. Let's see the difference. See, there's actually no difference. Timeline performance didn't change for me. So if I press play, it's the same. That's very interesting. Just this 5K Red Raw codec, for some reason, for this Intel chip, is very hard to play back. It was the same on Premiere Pro, but I think Premiere Pro did a little bit of a better job than DaVinci Resolve playing it back. Because in there, in Premiere Pro, we actually had even a 5K timeline, but this 4K timeline is, is quite a bit struggling, as you can see. CPU 100% utilized. So this is 6K Red Raw. Let's have a look at the timeline performance. Very, very choppy. Extremely, extremely choppy. So let me take the color grade off. Let's see if that is any different. As you can see, it's very, very choppy. That's interesting. Premiere Pro was much better playing this back. It's interesting, like, it depends on a codec, you see. It's not just generally that DaVinci Resolve is better at doing, like, the same codecs. It depends on a codec. Like, Red Rod doesn't play quite so well on DaVinci Resolve here. So let's put the color grade on and let's press play. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. That is a big, big chop fest. This is a big slideshow. So as you can see, if I'm going to press play, it's not playing it back at 24 frames per second. It's proper choppy. It shows it now it's 24 frames per second, but it isn't. You can see the face is very, very choppy. It's not properly played back. It's all over the place. So let's take the uh, color grade off and then see what's going to happen now. It's still exactly the same. See, the color grade doesn't change so much because our color grade actually goes on the GPU and the video is still played back on the CPU. Let's move on to BRAW 6K. So this should be like native codec for this DaVinci Resolve now. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. Plays back. No problem. So we're going pressing play and then now there's three B-roll clips on top of each other. And looks like it plays it back. No problem. Absolutely fine. Let's put the color grade on as well. Okay. It's a little bit choppy now. With the color grade. On top like that. But it's, it's pretty hard thing to play back. What this is... Three clips now and about, what, six, nine LUTs or something to play back? That's insane, because each clip has like three LUTs curves, LUT one, LUT two, which is basically three LUTs. But hey, generally, 6K B-Raw, like, plays back no problem. Like, we are using 4K timeline as well here. If you put it to 1080p, it should be a little bit easier to do as well. But leave it to 4K, because on Premiere Pro, we had everything like the native resolution of the clip. Let's move on to 8K. So this is Canon RAW R5 8K clip. Okay, let me take the color grade off at first, see what it's like without the color grade. Oh my word, this is very smooth. Oh yeah, I remember that about DaVinci Resolve. It's very good at playing it back. It will just show you see what the actual metadata is about the clips. 30 frames per second. It plays it back like no problem. So look at this. This is 8K now, Canon R5, and that's insane. It plays it back easier than the Red Raw, like 6K or 5K. And there's so much more data on this one. This is also with the color grade on, as you can see, the color grade is on exactly the same color grade. So let's have a look at this here. It's still not played on the iGPU. It's the CPU that's playing it back, but for DaVinci Resolve, it just works. Let's try Red Raw 8K now. Okay. So, timeline much more choppier than the Canon R5 Raw that we just tried. So, let's press play. Let's see what happens. And it actually, okay, it struggled and then managed to do it. So, now it's playing back. Change the clips. Playing its back still without any hassle. So that's quite something for the CPU to do. Bear in mind, this is 4K timeline now. Let's turn off the color grade. Let's see what the timeline performance is like. 
is not as smooth as the uh, Canon R5. Okay, when we're pressing play without the color grade, it actually does it quite fast. Like pressing play, look at that. Plays back 8K. That's pretty good. See? When we put the color grade on, then it gets a little bit, look, choppy. It just can't do that for some reason. But yet still, 8K is doable, but depends on the codec and which camera you're using. R5, 8K was much, much easier. Let's also try the 12K, okay? Look at that. It's a little bit choppy. Color grade is on, but what? It's playing it back. That's insane. Absolute insanity. Look at that. This is super, super crazy. <laughs> Look at that. This is 12K B-RAW. So if you're doing 12K B-RAW, you probably don't need to worry about that. And this is 4K timeline as well, so... Whew. So let's have a look at how the, the hardware play back this. Actually, I'm quite surprised how little the RAM has been used here on DaVinci Resolve, because on Premiere Pro, like playing back this footage over here, we used like over 50 gigabytes of RAM. This one is just idling around, you know, under 16 gigabytes, which is very, very impressive. Now let's have a look at the temperatures. The max temp we hit was 71. Our power consumption was 171. That's interesting because on Premiere Pro we were using like 195 or something watts. So we were pulling more. So it was more stress on the CPU. I do think it's because the timeline on Premiere Pro was the native timeline for each codec. So if it was 4K, it was 4K. If it was 5K, the timeline was 5K and so on. But in Premiere Pro, it doesn't kind of matter so much what timeline you're playing it back, the timeline resolution. It's, uh, it matters more on uh, DaVinci Resolve. So in conclusion, I think it's pretty good on DaVinci Resolve, as you can see. I mean, I'm interested to see what you are thinking, so let me know in the comments below. But any of the 4K codecs, I think it's gonna be absolutely amazing. No problem over there, especially if you have a 1080p timeline. The only things that didn't work quite so well here was the Canon 4K C200 RAW, and then the Red RAW 5K and 6K clips just didn't play back so well. B RAW was fine, and even Canon R5 8K was fine, but just the 5 and 6K weren't as good. The Canon RAW 8K was actually better than 6K, so that just blows my mind. I don't know why is that, but that's just, you know, what it is. Anyway, guys, if you haven't seen my full 12900K review, check it out in the description below or on the channel, and I'll see you next time. Music that you heard was from Artlist, so if you want to check them out, I'll leave links in the description below. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.